Hi everybody, welcome back to another live edition of the Village Camera Nerd. And today we're going to be solving a problem. A problem with the Ronin SC. I know some of you are going to have a lot of problems that you want to complain about, but this one is about achieving low mode, which is very annoying with like the default mode number three or whatever on this thing. Uh, and if you want to do roll and stuff like that, it, it's it's just, what the heck is this? What the heck? Why? Why? What? Ugh, my wrist! My wrist is dying! Ugh. So, um, one thing I definitely wanted to look into uh, was a actual handle in order to go into low mode. Uh, this made me kind of miss my Weeble Lab, which was the little gimbal I had before this one. So, I uh, looked on Amazon for something cheap that isn't freaking $100, like all film gear tends to be really expensive. And I ended up finding this uh, fun little gem over here. Now, this is uh, $30, uh, well, actually it was $29.95 at the time in which I bought it. So the price fluctuates, but y you see this for like $35, $40 or whatever. So uh, it was nice to find it at $30 for the exact same thing. I'm, I'm sure that a bunch of brands are made out of the same mold in the same factory uh, in China or whatever. So um, let me show you what it looks like out of the box. Let me move this out of the way so it doesn't cause autofocus issues. So it comes with, of course, the hardware and screws, but it's actually two piece. And I hope that uh, this can actually get in focus for you guys, but the brand is U-Rig and it is a handle, but they call it like a handy grip or whatever. You can see that has a shoe mount over here. And the part that actually connects to your Ronin SC is uh, this part right here. So it uh, replaces that little accessory mount and also adds a shoe and also adds airy uh, screw, uh, whatever you call it over here. And also has a quarter 20 and these two holes are for actually mounting it. And these um, screw holes actually attach the handle, which is kind of cool in which you could potentially detach uh, the handle while you're in the middle of production without, without actually unscrewing what you have rigged up over here, which would be very annoying. So we're gonna go ahead and install this and see how it works. By the way, as I am getting this ready, I want to just say that I am using a uh, different camera for streaming. Uh, so that may be why some people out there with uh, observant eyes will notice a slightly different look to this stream. See on live television, any number of stupid things can happen, like putting on matte boxes the wrong way. Uh, like my previous stream. So we're gonna lock this down just to be absolutely sure nothing funky happens. And we're gonna start with uh, the actual attachment that goes on here. Usually I like to have my focus wheel on the right side because when I attach a monitor, I want it hanging off on the left side, which it feels more natural to me. So I have to make a concession because this thing is made just for the right side. Um, it would be kind of weird. And a two hex button or whatever knob something screws. And it feels really solid. There's a little notch to help it fit in there. Uh, so right now it is very solid so far. $30 well spent so far. Let's uh, actually attach the handle. I'm going to have to move the gimbal uh, locked position somewhere else so you can see this properly. Um, yeah, the, the autofocus is going to want to focus here, but I think you see this well enough. And this is where we attach this part here, the handle. Now I wish this was a toolless um, set of screws that it came with, because if you are wanting to remove this handle, attach and remove as needed for your shoot, it would be very nice uh, to have the, that toolless option so you don't have to bust out a... I think my daughter is trying to talk to me right now. <gasps> I'm a fumbling buffoon. Don't hire me on your film set. I'll embarrass you in front of all your clients by dropping Allen wrenches. All right, cool. Well, that was pretty easy to install. Uh, you saw that it was just like a couple of minutes or whatever like that. So actually just uh, removing uh, this with a tool here, as long as you have a tool with you, is not bad. Now let's actually see this in action. Uh, before I talk about the other components of it. So, uh, let's see. Do I remember how to use my gimbal? Do I remember how to use my gimbal? Do I remember? When we first balanced, girl, do you remember the time when you got in box? Do you remember the time 
When we first charged, girl. Okay, from this side, uh, the power button is now a little bit more inset. So if anybody was a little bit, um, I guess, uh, nervous about uh, accidentally pressing the power button, you do have to hold it, so I don't know why you would be. Uh, it's now a bit more inset covered by this hardware here. And uh, you could still see the mode that you're on, but it is kind of covered uh, by this. Let me go over to the main screen since that's really all you really want to see right now. Okay, so let me switch over to low mode. It's not perfectly balanced, so it needs a little help getting past that back gimbal. And hopefully my shorts aren't long enough. Okay, cool. All right, so my review is that it feels comfy because it has these little uh, grips right here. And uh, the hand kind of conforms to that. So that's good. And then so when I want to do roll shots now, it's, it's not actually very high level. If I want to do roll shots now, it's like... To J.J. Abrams. And got to get that monitor out of the way. Speaking of monitors, there's a shoe mount on the back here, which you could mount a monitor on, but I found that that is very annoying uh, to have because it has uh, it creates imbalance issues for handling. Not for balancing the camera, but just for handling. I, I should close this if I really want to do low mode. And you could like start like uh, holding it like a chainsaw. And of course, the fun of having a gimbal here. So this, this, however, kind of blocks the way. So I might want to mount a monitor and I need to figure out a new way, whether it's an arm, because originally I was using this uh, small rig uh, thing right here, the small rig uh, bracket monitor that, uh, well, holder, which has both a screw for the quarter 20 uh, part of your monitor, and as well as a shoe mount, if you already have a built-in or whatever shoe mount system on, on it. But this uh, connects via the rosette of the accessory. So now that I have a um, accessory here without a rosette, and then uh, my focus motor controller on this side, this is not gonna work. So that is a big bummer. Uh, if I decide to keep this handle on all the time, I may as well just sell this thing or uh, whatever. I don't know how much it will sell for, honestly. I mean, if it works for like future versions of Ronin SCs or whatever, maybe I'll hold on to it. So uh, yeah, putting the shoe here, I guess you could also put other stuff like a, uh, if you do wireless audio, it could go on there as well. Uh, but of course, wireless audio can go here as well. But I recommend saving this portion for the, um, which I'm gonna call it monitor attachment. So you have a shoe or a quarter 20 here. So uh, I thought this was my, was my solution, but apparently I have to use like some kind of magic arm or similar. So this is a, a thumbs up to this uh, good goodbye for $30. Uh, as for people that are wondering what I plan to use this for, which is nobody, but I'll tell you anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like to actually, when I do real estate uh, video, I realize that one thing that, uh, that you have to keep in mind of is the verticals when you're in super wide angle lenses. Uh, and if you are holding it up here at eye, uh, eye level or something, the verticals will be like distorted this way. So in order to get nice straight vertical lines in your architecture shots, you're gonna have to hold it like more waist level. And that is really, really tough on your arms. So if you go into low mode and operate easily from there, it's kind of briefcase me uh, method, uh, that is so much more comfortable and you know sustainable in terms of doing long shots, flowing shots around the room. Please support this channel by clicking the affiliate link in the description below. So everybody who tuned in, thanks for watching and everybody's tuning in on the replay. Also, thanks for watching and please check out our other live stream recordings as well as our scheduled recordings, I mean scheduled live streams coming up. So tomorrow we'll be either unboxing the A6100 uh, e camera or we will be talking about EOS Pro Color. We'll find out which comes first because we're waiting for that camera to come in the mail. So anyway, thanks for joining and we'll see you next time. And this is where I have to look to the side and click end broadcast. <laughs>